Thank you for choosing to spend your lunch hour with NMA Jet One, which shares the latest news in Namibia, Africa and the world, highlighting current affairs, economic news, sports and international headlines in this broadcast. Now coming up in today's broadcast, Namibia Tourism Expo slated for November. Swapo Vice President Netumbo Nandi Daitwa said she will address questions linking her to the fish rod financed 2017 Congress after this year's Congress. Medical interns at Uganda's Mubende Hospital have gone on strike. I am Diana Master. And I am Aina Koya. This is NMH at 1. Now in today's midday news update, tourism is one of the world's most important economic sectors. It employs one in every 10 people on earth and provides livelihoods to hundreds of millions more, says Environment, Spokes Environment Ministry spokesperson Romeo Muyunda. The Environment Ministry is commemorating the day in Omutia Oshikoto region. The World Tourism Organization is celebrating the day under the theme Rethinking Tourism, while Namibia is celebrating it under the theme Promoting Heritage Cultural Experience to Harness sustainable tourism. Remember to engage with these stories on social media as we share some community news stories from across the country on the other side of this short break in our visual news segment. Stay with us. In our visual news this afternoon, this year's Namibian Tourism Expo is taking place in November at SKW. Henny Helden Hayes from the Synergy team talks about this event together with our sponsors. Let's have a look. Hi and good afternoon and welcome at SKW Sports Grounds where we officially launch our voucher campaign uh, that goes inside with our Tourism Expo of the 2022 year. Tracy, thank you so much for taking up this initiative by the Expo team and Jason with uh, Tourismus Namibia. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome you as a stakeholder on board where we're giving away the thousand dollar vouchers to our participants entering the Expo during the uh, from the 3rd to the 5th of November 2022 and um, thank you for coming on board. Thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. FMB is delighted to be part of this handover of the vouchers again. Holidays guys, this is what it's all about. Traveling this beautiful country, looking out for all of the opportunities that we can have when people visit us too. So thanks for the opportunity. Everybody go out there, make sure you get a voucher, make sure that you get all the way across this country so that you can enjoy the best of what we have to offer and uh, FNB is delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you Tracy and with the theme this year being supporting regional tourism it's always a pleasure to welcome NBL on board as well. Marco thank you for this opportunity for taking up this uh, uh, great initiative and uh, thank you for joining us again this year the second time that you're also joining us uh, with FNB on this voucher giveaway. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Namibia Breweries is equally excited to be part of uh, you know the Tourism Expo this year. Um, this is, as you mentioned, this is our second year that we are a co-sponsor. Um, and I think you know after COVID, um, you know it's uh, in everybody's interest to get tourism back on track. And uh, you know for us, the tourism sector is a significant stakeholder at Namibia Breweries, so we are more than happy to be part of this again this year and to support it. And uh, yeah, I think uh, equally please Namibia. Uh, please support this expo and you know the voucher initiative and uh, i really hope it's going to be great success thank you 
watch the, 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 the press, especially today when we're celebrating World Tourism Day. Uh, we'll be giving away $1,000 vouchers for you to come and join us at this year's expo so that we can make a success out of this. Thank you very much. Moving right along, the Buy Local Grown Amoeba Initiative seeks to empower local entrepreneurs over the weekend with a market at the Franco Namibian Cultural Centre. Julian Dabolsko, the director of the FNCC, talks to us about the event. I'm pleased to welcome you to the FNCC. We are home to promoting the local arts and cultural scene, as well as the exchange of cultural cooperation between Namibia and France. And uh, today we are honored uh, to host more than 40 local entrepreneurs who are going to showcase their savoir-faire from diverse sectors, cuisine, beverages, entertainment, beauty products, media and services. So they are all here already and uh, I want, because I know they, are, they can hear me, uh, downstairs that they are uh, welcome and we're very happy to host them. Uh, I want, uh, first, um, we are honored to welcome the Minister of Industrialization and Trade, Honorable Lucia Lipunku. Thank you for honor gracing us with your presence today. We are honored that you will officially open today's fair. Uh, also welcome to Shen Tang, Resident Coordinator, UN Namibia. Thank you for being with us today and uh, also opening the fair. Also a very warm welcome to our esteemed guests. Vice President Netumbo Nandindaitwa yesterday said she will address questions linking her to the Fish Road Finance 2017 Congress after this year's Congress. More on this story in our newspaper review segment. You're watching Animated One. Let's take a look at what the lead stories are in Namibia's daily newspapers. Starting off on the Namibian Sun front page, Swapo Vice President Ntumbo Nandindaitwa yesterday said she will address questions linking her to the Fish Rod Financed 2017 Congress after this year's Congress. She's campaigning to retain her position at the November Congress, which could catapult her to the country's presidency. Nandindaitwa has been branded as the least corrupt amongst those vying for the position, but former Swapo Party Youth League National Executive member Sioni Ikela disagrees with this notion, saying victors at the 2017 Congress are products of fish rod funded campaigns. Speaking on the Evening Review yesterday, she said any leader who is a product of the 2017 Congress is a dirty product because this was a Congress that was funded with the dirty fish rod money. The records are there for all to see. On its page 3, the paper reports that a 97-year-old man died when he burned beyond recognition after his corrugated iron room caught fire at the Okamule village in the Oshana region. Oshana Community Affairs Officer Inspector Thomas Ayambo said the incident occurred at around 4 a.m. on Sunday. It is alleged that the deceased slept alone in his bedroom and was a habitual smoker, he said. Family members suspect, that the, de suspect the deceased might have been smoking during the early morning hours, he added. Ayambo said, according to preliminary investigations, no foul play is suspected and an inquest docket has been opened. In our next story, the Republican reports that a failed fire was again caused last Thursday close to Okahanya after a shooting exercise by the Namibian Defense Forces set the grass alight. The Ochesta Zoo game and guest farm again suffered damages. The NDF had to pay the owners more than half a million dollars in 2018 after a similar incident in 
in 2014. The NDF acknowledged the latest incident but complained that some farmers did not want to grant them access, grant the soldiers access to fight the fire off their land and in the surrounding mountains. In our next story, both the Vintuk Municipality and the Vintuk Show Society have rejected a petition by animal welfare groups that demands that a 10-minute long fireworks exhibition at the show be cancelled this Thursday. City of Ventuk says all re legal requirements have been met. Apart from that, a safety inspection has also been done at the premises. Harold Schmidt, managing director of the show society, argued that entertainment is important to attract people and to have some and to have some fun following the tough years of lockdowns. Now the Algamana Taitung on its front page takes a look at Namibia which is currently courting Namibia's diaspora. In line with the cabinet decision taken last year already, government is aiming to integrate the Namibian diaspora into the Namibian community. This is supposed to be done by introducing a relevant law, but what seems puzzling is the fact that the new draft seems once again not to respect that swap of party matters cannot automatically be regarded as national matters. However, in the draft, the following is stated. The national policy on Namibian diaspora is an overall policy framework that is guided by the constitution of the Republic of Namibia vision 2030, the Arambe Prosperity Plans, National Development Plans, the Swapo Party Manifesto, and other legal and strategic documents of Namibia. It would seem a matter of course that this approach would see the opposition parties approaching this new idea with disdain. On its page 3, the Algamana Taitung tells us more about rhino conservationists who are increasingly at odds over how best to combat rhino poaching. Meanwhile, the front between those who want to see a controlled rhino horn trade legalized as opposed to advocates who are in favor of inserting radioactive material into the horns in particular seems to be hardening. The latter is the pilot project led by South African professor James Larkin who has developed a protection strategy according to which a radioactive isotope is to be injected into the horn of the rhinos, making the horn unsuitable for trade and thus deterring poachers. We will be right back after this short commercial break. zooms in on a swapo on swapo vice president candidate and current prime minister of tourism Zanga Shiseke reporting that the 54 year old has said that it is time for his generation to ascend to the top of top leadership position. Shiseke also emphasized that he will not go out of the vice presidency race at the upcoming swapo congress where he expects to compete with the 54 year old prime minister Sana Kiwangela Amagira and her deputy Mutumbo Nandi Mbaisa, who is 69 years old. The ex-Coast and uh, People's Liberation Army of Namibia fighters gathered on Friday at the Kasukura Youth Center and threatened to hold a peaceful demonstration at State House if the government does not respond to their pleas to return part of the 36 million Namibian dollars they claim was given to them by the apartheid government. In another story, two police officers from Oshakati region arrested in connection with corruption on Friday were granted bail when they appeared in the Oshakati Magistrate Court yesterday. Now, New Era leads with word that serious allegations of impropriety have been made against former police chief Sebastian De Tunga and some of the top brass of the Namibian police. While one of the police's alleged enfant terribles is the head of logistics Andreas Nilumbu, who allegedly stole a power generator and has been using a police vehicle on his private farm in northern Namibia, charges that De Tunga allegedly swept under the rug during his stewardship. 
The paper on its page three reports that one of the businessmen accused of defrauding the government of 3.5 billion Namibian dollars in taxes has withdrawn his application in which he wanted the High Court to compel the Prosecutor General from proceeding to prosecute him on charges of fraud and money laundering. He, however, has not filed reasons why he decided to not proceed with his application against the Prosecutor General. Well, in our next story, on to the economic news. Market Watch reports that NetBank Namibia, together with OMDIS and Economy Namibia, have completed the small, medium sized enterprises and economic development pilot project that is aimed at diversifying the economic activities of Oranyamund. This project is to support and uplift SME development, was agreed upon by NetBank Namibia, OMDIS and economy, economy Namibia in November 2021. Now, since then, the project has delivered exciting designs that will undoubtedly diversify Oranyamun's economy. Now, an investment in women will accelerate agricultural growth while addressing food security and self-food reliance. We'll take a look at the story after the break in our economic news segment. Stay with us. In our economic news this afternoon, an investment in women will accelerate agricultural growth while addressing food security and self-food reliance. Agricultural Ministry Executive Director Ndia Kupi Nituamata said at, at this year's Women and Agriculture Summit recently, adding that women in Namibia are central to all aspects of agriculture and off-farm activities in their communities. According to her, women contribute significantly to household investment, community resilience, national economy growth and the vibrancy of regional economies. Gitwamata said despite the role of women, despite the role women play in agriculture, they are constrained by lack of involvement in the decision making process and access to finances, adding that the agricultural sector and particularly farmers in communal area face the challenges of market access lack of agricultural mechanization and value addition to agricultural pro produce. The ministry has initiated programs that aim to empower women with the belief that empowered women farmers can increase their income, develop a stable rural livelihood and contribute to food and nutrition security, she said. This includes the dry land crop production program, which supports small medium scale crop farmers with subsidies, agriculture production inputs and mechanized services. In our next story, ESCOM has secured 38 million rand in funding to set up a training facility that will help reskill workers at the Komati power station and communities in the surrounding Pumalanga region. News 24 Business understands the multi-million rand grant is to be provided by the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet. The group of global funders which aim to assist developing countries shift to clean energy as part of climate commitments. The alliance includes governments, entrepreneurs and philanthropic, philanthropic partners such as the Bezos Earth Fund, the Rockefeller Foundation and IKEA Foundation. In August, ESCOM had signed a memorandum of agreement with the South African Renewable Energy Technology Center of the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. The agreement will see Saratec assist ESCOM in setting up a similar renewable energy training facility to upskill artisans and technicians at the Komati power station. Now, Saratech is the only fully accredited training center for renewable energy in South Africa. It has been operating since 2016 and has trained hundreds of technicians in renewable energy skills. At the time, ESCOM CEO Andre De Ruita lauded Saratech for being a leader in its field. Now, let's have a look at our economic indicators.
The Namibian dollar is on an onward trajectory increasing in value in relation to most currencies. Capricorn Investment Group stock prices have dropped on the NSX while most prices remain the same. Local index and overall index have dropped while most stock prices remain unchanged on the NSX. Brent crude oil is up in price while other commodities have dropped in price. Now medical interns at Uganda's Mubende Hospital have gone on strike. We find out why in the next segment as we highlight news from the African continent after the break. In the news from Africa, medical interns at Uganda's Mubede Hospital have gone on strike accusing the government of not providing them appropriate safety kit, risky allowance, risk allowances excuse me, and health insurance. The hospital located some 150 kilometers from the capital Kampala is hosting the main isolation center for Ebola patients as the outbreak continues to spread in the central region. All 34 interns in including doctors, pharmacists and nurses, said in a statement that they would not return to work and want to be evacuated to a facility with safer working conditions. Six in ten medical workers are said to have been exposed to the virus and are currently in isolation waiting for their results from the lab. Authorities says they have been at least they have at least 36 suspected cases of Ebola, although not all have been confirm at least 23 deaths are expected to have been caused by the virus an outbreak of the sudan strain of ebola was declared in the country last week the first confirmed death was a 24 year old man who lost six members of his family in the first two weeks of september available vaccine against the virus can't be used in uganda because they are only effective in dealing with the zyra strain which was behind the 23 to 2016 outbreak in the in the West African country. Moving right along, a panel set up by Nigeria's National Human Rights Commission has recommended the dismissal and prosecution of a number of police officers for torture, extrajudicial killings and illegal detentions. The committee set up in the wake of mass street protests against police brutality in 2020 has not said how many officers it wants to be dismissed or prosecuted, but that this will be later made public at a later date. The panel, headed by a senior judge, Sulaiman Galadima, has also ordered the payment of compensation to victims of police brutality. Earlier this month, dozens of, of victims or their families had received similar compensations totaling about $700,000, the first such payments since the national panel was set up. The protests, which took place nearly two years ago under the hashtag in SARS, were against a notori notorious police unit known as the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS. They forced the authorities to disband the unit created to fight violent crime, including armed robberies and kidnappings. Now, in our next story, South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, is not ruling out a political comeback after he was forced to step down in 2018 amid a storm of corruption allegations. The former president was accused of placing the interests of corrupt associates ahead of those of his country in a type of corruption known as state capture. Zuma denies any wrongdoing. On Monday, he said he was approached by the party member to take up the position of the national chairperson of the ruling ANC party ahead of its national conference in December. I will not refuse such a call should they deem it necessary for me to serve the organization again at that level or any other, he said in a statement tweeted by his daughter Dudu Zuma. He said the ANC party was facing serious organizational challenges and threw his weight behind cabinet minister Kosasana Dlamini Zuma to lead the party. 
Today has been a historic day in Japan, a state funeral for the country's longest serving prime minister that was not without controversy. In our international news segment after the break, we'll find out why. You're watching Animated One. Headlining our international news, today has been a historic day in Japan, a state funeral for the country's longest serving prime minister that was not without controversy. Despite protesters opposed to the cost of the publicly funded service gathering in Tokyo inside the Budokan Arena, the event went smoothly. More than 4,000 people, including about 50 current and former world leaders, attended the somber ceremony. It featured a large portrait of Abe hung over a bank of flowers, some of which were arranged in the design of the Japanese flag. His widow Aki Abe brought in his ashes and they were placed in the center of this shrine. A military salute was followed by a moment of silence and then a video retrospective of Mr. Abe's political life. Several political figures gave eulogies including current PM Kishida and their former Prime Minister Suga. Their speeches emphasized Abe's global legacy. Earlier, more than 10,000 mourners queued around the venue to lay flowers at public sites. As Japan's leader from 2012 to 2020, Abe was a prominent figure on the world stage. In our next story, President Vladimir Putin is preparing to formally annex around 15% of Ukrainian territory after referendums on joining Russia in areas controlled by Russian forces or Russian-backed separatists. Neither the West nor Ukraine can stop Putin claiming the region, though the United States and its allies says that they want Ukraine to defeat Russia on the battlefield and will help it do so by supplying weapons but not NATO troops. The United States is prepared to impose additional economic cost on Russia in conjunction with the U.S. allies if Moscow moved forward in with annexing portions of Ukraine territory, the, the White House said. After imposing severe sanctions on Russia, though there is not a great deal of economic punishments left to inflict unless the United States could get China and India to agree to some sort of cap on the price of Russian energy. The West could send more advanced weapons to Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said Ukraine had received sophisticated air defense system known as the National Advanced Surface to Air System from the United States. Zelensky is has repeatedly warned that the referendums on annexation by Russia would destroy any chance of peace talks. That's it from the international news segment. After the break, we get into local sports. Stick around. The My.NA Cars Show provides viewers with the best in class cars content, engaging interviews, as well as a showcase of the latest cars related news, products, and services. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact My.NA at synergy.com.na. My.NA Cars, more than just a ride. Afternoon. Ventuk Old Boys kept their faint little hopes alive with a 5 to 0 victory against Wanderers on Friday. But despite picking up a bonus point win, Saint remained in pole position to win the league. The old win put Old Boys in on a 12 points in second place on the log, and although they have a match in hand over the leaders, Saint remained eight points ahead. 
Now the Sousa MMA studio will host its first ever international mixed martial arts competition at Sport Club Vintok on Saturday. The America Fighters League event has attracted combat sports specialists from Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Africa and Zambia. The Namibia Masters men 50 plus hockey team are gearing to compete at the Masters World Cup tournament scheduled for 1 to 10 October in Cape Town, South Africa. After the break, we get into international sports news. For news related or advertising queries, contact Irongo Talk at synergy.com.na. Irongo Talk, our community, your news. Starting off our international sports news, Tyson Fury says his proposed heavyweight showdown with Anthony Joshua is off after a deadline set by Fury's camp expired without a deal on Monday. Fury said Joshua on an ultimatum on Friday night, insisting if the deal could not be done in time, then he would walk away from the blockbuster or British bout. The Uruguayan defender Donald Arroyo is, is in danger of missing the World Cup after his club Barcelona said on Monday he would undergo surgery on torn thigh muscles. The centre the centre back is likely to be sidelined sidelined rather for between two and three months, according to the reports in Spain. That would probably rule him out of the tournament in Qatar, which starts on the 20th of November. Now South Africa's Rugby World Cup winning winger Cheslin Colby said on Monday that France are favourites for next year's competition. The Bleu emphatically beat New Zealand in November before winning their first Six Nations title since 2010 in March. If you're just joining us, we will be right back after the short commercial break with your highlights. Stay with us. My.na Property Show provides viewers with the best in-class content, engaging interviews as well as a showcase of the latest property-related products and services. If you would like to feature your brand or your campaign on this platform, contact my.na at synergy.com.na. My.na Properties, more than just a roof over your head. You're watching Animated One. As always, we end off the show with the highlights from today's broadcast. Medical interns at Uganda's Mubende Hospital have gone on strike, accusing the government of not providing them with appropriate safety kit, risk allowances and health insurance. Today has been a historic day in Japan, a state funeral for the country's longest serving prime minister that was not without controversy. Vintok Old Boys kept their faint title hopes alive with a 5-0 victory against Wanderers on Friday, but despite picking up a bonus point win, Saints remain in pole position to win the league. Those have been our highlights. Thank you very much for staying with Animated Major One and for spending your lunch hour with us. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. as we take you through the latest happening in Namibia and beyond. Now that is it from all of us here in studio. Today is World Tourism Day and here is a short video about the Tourism Expo. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon. The Honorable Deputy Minister of Environment, Tourism and Forestry, Honorable Heather Sibungo, allow me to welcome you to your first introduction and first phase of the Namibia Tourism Expo, which you were unfortunately deprived of last year by COVID. Welcome. Mr. Albi Botta, the Chief Executive Officer of Namibia Media Holdings, welcome. Allow me to acknowledge the presence of Binzo, Mr. Binzo, representing the CEO of Namibia Tourism Board, who's not here. 
colleagues from the media, members of the tourism industry, all protocols observed. Good afternoon. As much as COVID has come to disrupt our traditional way of doing things, I am sure we can acknowledge that it has also come to teach us one or two ways of doing things in a better way. One of it is, or one of them is having a program of 45 minutes from a three to five hours program as we usually um, have. And I am pleased to be directing that very short program, but yet very important um, this afternoon. And my name is Megan Bako, and as I said, I am going to be the program director for this afternoon. Welcome to the launch of the Namibia Tourism Expo 2022, um, which is going to be a series of events in itself. Um, it is pleasing to see the faces that I've last seen in uh, 2020, 2020 together. It is pleasant to see people without masks. What does it tell you? It tells you that Namibia is ready to receive our guests. It shows you that Namibia is ready to host. Um, I will also like to acknowledge our followers, our viewers who are following us on our online platforms. Um, good afternoon and thanks for joining us online. Um, Namibia tourism industry has been really hard hit. But I can see smiles on the faces of the Namibian tourism members. I can see um, faces that shows hope. I can see hope in their eyes. I can see them looking forward to a better 2022. And that is all that we are all here for, to unite in looking forward to build our industry and to look forward to how we can do things better and much more better and replace what all we have missed. Without further ado, let me invite to the podium uh, Mr. Albi Botta, the CEO of Namibia Media Holdings, to give us the background and the concept for the Namibia Tourism Expo 2022. Thank you. Heather Shibungu, Deputy Minister of Environment, Tourism and Forestry, distinguished guests, members of the tourism family, the media, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is a very, uh, very emotional state in my life in terms of tourism. We, uh, we've gone through a very, very difficult time and um, not quite to the day, but as close as damn it is to a swear word. Two years ago, this country was shut down because of COVID-19. I remember the Friday when the rumors were running that the first case was in our country. We took very strong commitment towards the tourism industry, which is older than 20 years. And when we had an expo in 2020, I think one of the few expos in the entire world, and most probably the only one in Africa. And we were committed to this industry like never before. Tourism is, um, is, is the heartbeat of this country. So when tourism does not happen, our art is stopping. When 2021 started, we were committed to an expo for that year with everything that we had, knowing that 2020 was a rough year. A little did we know that 2021 would be even more rough. We then took a very difficult decision that for the first time in 22 years, we did not have an expo. We took all our resources from financial resources to human capital to actively support the Republic of Namibia in the vaccination program. 
I know there's private sector companies here as well that was part of that process as well. And we set up a vaccination centre with the Ministry of Health. Very proud to say that over 23,000 people have been vaccinated at our centre alone in the last 12 months. That was our contribution to tourism in 2021 because we knew that without a vaccination rate at an acceptable level, and do think it's still too low for the record, we would not get tourism back to a level that makes it a word that's very important called sustainable, and we'll get to that just now as well. So our entire campaign of 2021 was, we did have a tourism expo, it was a vaccination center, and we had 23,000 people go through our center. Ironically, it's about the same number that goes through our expo every year when we do have an expo, but for this time for another reason. Um, so we're proud to be part of the Republic of Namibia, proud of being part of the vaccination program, proud of our small contribution. For the record, over 700,000 people, not people, vaccines have been made. So that means 3.5% of all vaccinations went through one center in Eros. The reality though is that before COVID-19 happened, uh, we had a range of events or campaigns that we were running. Uh, and the last five-year campaign was around ecotourism and sustainable tourism. And we had just finished that campaign in 2019 as our last year. And our focus, and it still is going forward, was then to move into youth and tourism. In the meantime, COVID did happen, as you quite rightly know, and we were required is maybe the right word, because force sounds like a war and I don't want to talk war today, we're required to realign our strategy to understand that, that COVID's disruption is not just something that's going to be gear and then gone. It is a reality that we're going to have to work with for some time. So the word sustainable all of a sudden was no longer just saving the rhino or the elephant. It was to save an entire industry, industry that was on the brink of collapse. And, and, and although we're not invested in any establishment at all as Namibia Media Holdings, we are partners like no other business that's not invested. And, and we had to go and say, how do we make a model work going forward in terms of tourism, in terms of reaching people so that people can support our country, and more specifically, countries 10 degrees south of the equator. And that's where the concept of 10 degrees south came. I think it's, it's more valid now than ever before that how we will find a sustainable tourism model to, to replace the current disruption that COVID-19 and the war in, the, in Europe um, will have an impact on us is to make sure that as, and I'm not a very good politician, that's why I don't like using the word SADC countries, but as SADC countries, we, we work in inter tourism engagements. So, so that's where we are now, actively finding ways how do we get tourists from Botswana, from South Africa, from Zimbabwe, from Angola, from Zambia, our neighboring countries to support us. Unfortunately, cars and planes have to travel both ways. So I think what has changed is our understanding of how do we support these countries as well. And we have to find ways of not just requesting people to come to our country, but also how do we find ways of promoting to go to countries. So small things that we've started, because things do start with small ways, is we started a program on a new television station called Carp Full Whip. And how do we start? It's the first one. Inter-tourism between the Western Cape and Namibia. And this type of strategy we will do with all Southern African countries and actively promote that country and promote our country, that country and our country, so that we can make sure that this concept of 10 degrees south is not just a statement but a reality. And we believe by following the Southern African engagement strategy that we will hopefully contribute towards tourism in this country as well. I understand that the world is out there. Understand that the money is in the world out there. I also understand that without the world, it will be difficult to be sustainable and that we do need the world to come and visit us. But the Namibia Tourism Expo 
Africa's commitment is to making sure that we can find a sustainable model within Southern Africa. There are other shows, other expos that will take on the world and make sure they come visit our country. Ours is first and foremost to get Namibians, and I'll get to that point now, to support our own country, and then for Southern Africa to support us, but more importantly, or just as important, that we support them. So, last point I'd like to make about this concept of sustainable tourism is how do we actively encourage Namibians to support their own country? One of the themes that we, we ran over the years, um, a couple of them, one of them was uh, the recycling uh, and sustainable tourism. And, and I'm proud to say that I still think one of the f reasons why uh, our country and our towns are a million times more cleaner than any country in Southern Africa is because of that campaign. And we didn't do it alone, we worked with other people. But the other one was supporting the towns and making sure that we don't just go through a town, that we stop and engage the town and, and understand that Anjivarongo do have crocodiles. And, and what does it mean when Anjivarongo has crocodiles? So, so we're back to that space right now. And that's why our theme this year is taking tourism to the regions. The official tourism expo will be between 3 and 5 November. It will be at SKW. We're very excited about that campaign. We've had discussions with various um, role players in the industry, and, and, and they feel a lot more comfortable that the expo is in November than in their high season in May. Um, and so we, we will continue with that plan of action this year. But, but it's a long time between the 9th of March and the 3rd of November. And a lot is happening in our country between the 9th of March and the 3rd of November. So what we'll be doing as Namibia Media Holdings with our team is to take tourism to the regions. We will actively work with three partners, and I don't want to go into the details today because um, we'd like to keep you in suspense. We can say it's the Kunini region, we can say it's the Ronga region, and we can say it's Oshona region. The reality is that we've got to get tourism to the people as well. And, and when I say tourism to the people, it's more than just um, a hall with stands. Sorry. It's more than just having an event like today. It's more than just two or three days. It has to be an active campaign in that period. So if we are going to do something in, say, July, then it's not just three days. It's that entire month, and our focus will be on that region, promoting that region. Secondly, although we're in the game of Expo, and um, Expo by default means that you come to a place, you engage the place, you see what there is to offer in terms of establishments, uh, nothing is more powerful than showing the establishment. So what COVID has done is that's changed the landscape. It's changed the understanding of how we can share a message. Now, I'm not a big fan of virtual tours, I must be honest. Um, but, but it's extremely powerful of getting a message across. So when we do engage a region, like the Kunini region, we will actively engage the region, not just the event, and make sure that we share the story of the Kunini in terms of its destinations. We, we decided to focus on three at a time, because unfortunately, I'm an accountant, but that's not my problem. That's Lou Allen's problem, who's in charge of finance. My problem is that I've got to make sure that it's sustainable. In other words, that we can afford to do this. Um, right now, um, as we all know, money is very scarce. And, and, and therefore, whatever we do, we have to do it in such a way that it's cost effective. And that's why we, we, we said let's do three regions at a time. Um, you can do the maths. It'll take a couple of years to get to them all. But it's important that we get to the people on the ground and share their stories on the ground in terms of tourism. And, and that will be our commitment when we engage these three regions between the 9th of March and most probably by the end of September because we've got to start planning in October in detail for the November Expo. So a bit of background. We're taking tourism to the regions um, and we will celebrate the, the, the Namibia Tourism Expo from 3 to 5 November at SKW. Uh, our focus is on making sure that we play an active role in, in, in sharing the message in 10 degrees south and, and helping in our small little way of, of contributing towards intertourism between us and these 10 degrees south countries. 
If anybody um, have any ideas of how we can do it even better, um, please, please work with us. Uh, there, there's a campaign that we're also running right now, it's called Two, uh, and it's actually a so corporate social responsibility campaign. Um, but it basically comes down to the principle of how do we do things together? I think, I think this, this industry is, 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 is renowned of working together, so it's, it's maybe a good example of how things can be done. But it doesn't mean that we can't do it better. So if there's any specific ideas, we, we, we're extremely open to working with people. Um, it's only one message, and that is how do we make sure the heartbeat of this country called tourism can, it is pumping, but, but it's very soft. How we can get this heart rate up faster, uh, as much as I'm, I'm safe right now, fully vaccinated, I, I cannot deny that the, the reality of COVID is still out there. And therefore, in, in an environment where COVID, is still is, where, st where COVID still is, we need to continue to be safe and do it in such a way that we can stay open. Um, I think it's one thing to close down. It's another thing to open up. And then you can close down again, and you can open up. But in any case, to a point, it doesn't work anymore. So we can't open, close, open, close, open, close. That door must now stay open. Um, otherwise, it won't open. So thank you. Thank you for making time this afternoon. It's a real honor for me to be part of this wonderful campaign that's much older than I am in terms of my commitment to NMH. Very proud to carry on with this message. And, and thanks, for everybody, for the support. Thank you. can give Albi another round of applause. Thank you, Albi. Indeed, two can just do better. And all of us can just do better together. When we say we are taking tourism to the regions, it does not mean Namibia Media Holdings or this brand, Namibia Tourism Expo, is taking tourism to the regions. Namibia Media Holdings has been creating the platforms, the platform for the tourism operators to network, engage, make business, and talk about tourism. And with that, we have become one of the key players in tourism as well. Now, when we are saying we are going to the regions, it's again another platform that are already created in the regions that we want to just give a little bit of the booster and we do not want to go there alone. We will want to see Fenata, represented by the chairperson, chair lady who just joined us, Netumbo Nashandi, with all her associations joining the brand Namibia Tourism Expo, to Ongwediva Trade Fair, to Okakarara, to Opuo, and wherever things are happening, so that we can give hope to the people in the regions that soon they will still again see buses of tourists supporting their courier shops, supporting the, the crafts and arts, and injecting again money in their economies. So that is what we mean when we say we are taking tourism to the regions. Um, as we move, uh, I'll be when with my program, thank you. So I <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. As we move um, on with our program, as I said, COVID has taught us a um, couple of things that we can continue um, doing better is by having very shorter programs. Um, we have come to the stage where we all are hungry to be motivated more. 